If we need it, you will need it, and I will need them. If we don't need them, neither one of us needs them. But it seems to have been corrected, so it may not be necessary, and I'm moving back to a more comfortable spot. Okay. Um, oh, oh you're okay. Oh, Bodie, stop it. Okay, I am about... Ah, Michael Cillian's here, and I must be live already. Leave, come. <laughs> I'm live. I'm here. <laughs> oh, you're here? You Wonderful. Here. I hear you, and I... No, you need to get on your Facebook page, Leaf. I think I'm on the Facebook, or, or is it Messenger? Yeah, you're on Messenger. Get on to Facebook. Let me introduce right. yourself. Right. Okay, see you soon. Hey, folks, it is Carla of GiggleFest University and Rayhan's World of Connections, and I am here to speak, my voice is cracking, I am here to speak with Leif Edmondson, who just got here, and I didn't realize I had pushed the live button, and why am I not seeing Leif here? Hey, Jackson. Okay, I can add you now. And I'm bringing life in, and I'm excited. Um, we are sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which is an online organization creating peace with one conversation at a time. And I have an amazing life, Edmondson, which you need to move your camera a little because I can only see half your face and move it up so I can see you. Uh, great. That's perfect. And I'm excited to speak to him because I am I'm concerned about some things that need to be fixed for me for the future but more concerned about how how the future, how this very moment affects our future. And can you see me clearly, Leif? You're not, yes. there isn't a lighting problem. I was about to move back where there may be less, more light. <laughs> you need the sunshine on, on your face. Yeah, well, where I can go, I can put a lamp and there'll be more light. Would you rather have? No, no, it's it's okay. It's well, okay. I'll hear hear about that from Rayhan later, but that's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michael was here a few moments ago. That's how I found out I was on live already, <laughs> and I didn't know it. So you know what? I'm going to go for more lighting. As I'm doing that, please introduce yourself, and we will okay. get this show on the road. Okay. Um, as uh, Carla was saying, my name is Leif Edvinson. Um, I'm from Sweden, but I was uh, learning to think in California when I was a student at Berkeley once upon a time. And um, there I, I learned many, many things. Uh, and the thought processing actually took me from uh, the business community to the academic community as well. So I ended, uh, uh, as it looks like, uh, my career by being professor. So now I'm Professor Emeritus, which means that I'm a retired professor. And um, I try to teach the youngsters to think 
and to use the brain power. And uh, that is a wonderful challenge. And I've published a number of books and papers and uh, podcasts, etc., on the subject of how to use your brain in a smarter way, uh, even if that is not the title. And uh, this is the future for us, actually. If you look at the new economics, it's in the uh, intangible, the intangible assets. And I started to call that intellectual capital. And intellectual capital is uh, derived insights of head value. So uh, what's your intellectual capital, Carla? I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean by intellectual capital? I think you have a marvelous intellectual capital, uh, but it starts with your potential. Uh, and uh, this potential is actually intellectual capital in waiting. So the intellectual capital in waiting is where you should look first and then uh, explore it and then expand it and then um, put it up to usage by other people. So the value creation is not by yourself, it's by others. Okay. <laughs> this is all new to me, a new way of looking at it, which you always <laughs> do to me, and I needed that today. If we're talking about intellectual capital um, and waiting and being, um, should I say, patient. Patience is something I'm not always good with. And when I met Rayhan, I was worse with it than I am now. I've improved. I want to talk to you about the future. Because for me, there's a lot of things happening very, very quickly. Hmm. I feel like the future is finally coming to where I want it to be, so to speak. But my, and then I'm saying, but, which, <laughs> I need to figure out what I can do right this moment to make the make to ensure as much as possible that my future will be more concrete or more of what I want it to be. In other words, I'm working on my mindset and changing it. And I ne really realized today when I was in a conversation with someone, my mindset is changing extraordinarily fast. And I had no idea until I saw how I reacted to a situation that normally would have had me in tears at this moment as well as when the conversation happened, because I would have been scared stiff. So help me, enlighten me, life. I will try to share with you what I think is a part of the future. First of all, it's a rather expansive, development of, of the future. And, and that probably is related to the social media, that we get to know um, so many people around the world, the, the news travels so fast. But it's also about this um, lack of factfulness. Hans Rusling, a Swedish researcher, was advocating the, the tremendous importance to um, learn to work with factfulness. Today we have so much fake news and that is um, sometimes used to, to create disorder and fear. And uh, as you know, uh, when you are afraid, uh, you are reacting with the reptile brain, the reptile part of the brain. So if you are, um, for example, in the fire forces, uh, then you learn 
to uh, close that down and go for the more logic, the more uh, rational behavior. So therefore, uh, what you observe in, in your thinking is a part of a new training course, but uh, the risk is that you are just being stressed by the new situation instead of, of uh, doing the opposite. And that might be called mindfulness, it might be called something else, but it, it is to learn to find the rhythm as well as the journey to the insights. So that's why in um, the development in Japan, as we spoke about last time, I think we were working on future centers. Yeah. Then in Japan, they started to talk about wise centers, the centers of, of uh, the same culture or, or the new way of thinking. And this is probably uh, what might be the interesting topic down the road. How do we combine neuroscience, economics, and wisdom? Help me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I would say the same. Help me. talks about the future and you got Captain Future started so you're the you're the Yeah, I've been on this. Well, I'm I'm one of the scholars perhaps, but that I've been on this journey for 40 years now and I started my first future center in 1996. Um, but uh, started to prototype long before that uh, with uh, British scientists. And it's extremely interesting to see that uh, most of our um, organizations, as well as um, political uh, constructs are based on old thinking. Just look at the situation with Brexit in UK, look at the debates on the streets in uh, Lebanon, etc. right now. They say that we need a new government, we need new laws, etc. But you don't pick them down from the shelf. You have to develop them. And that's why the prototyping is so important. And there we might learn from the history. There. There's a wonderful book called How to Learn to Think, like Leonardo oh, da Vinci. really? I never heard of it. It's a very good book. Uh, it's written by an American um, scientist. His name is Michael Gelb. And uh, he is um, sharing a n- number of um, learnings from Leonardo. He-, he kept a little black notebook where he r- jotted down some ideas as the day went on. But did you know that he was funding his research and painting by being a party fixer. So he traveled around among the the castles in Europe, arranging parties. And based on that income, he could spend it on uh, prototyping uh, various kinds of drawings and and constructs. Mm -hmm. So you see pleasure and job coming together in a smart way. I agree with that. And all through my life, I thought, if you're going to do a job, you must love it. And my first job was with my yes. parents in the, de- in the dental office. And I didn't love that too much. But that was a year that <laughs> and all the kids did. And I, I had to, you know, I don't think it was designed that every child would do it in the house. But everyone all of us, my sister, brother, and I worked in the office. I was never meant to stay in a dental office. I don't like the dentist. I'm not going to begin liking the dentist. (laughs) That ain't happening. And somehow through my journey, everything I've done for the most part, at least I started it out liking it. 
I love to teach special ed kids. And what I'm doing with Rehan, I love doing. Now I need to begin monetizing it. And I know that this moment, depending on how I take the moment and how I perceive the moment, can either push me in that direction or put me the opposite, depending on how I listen to you. So I'm wondering, what would you tell me? How, how should I move forward with this? One option might be that you um, start to ask the question, what's the value in what you are doing? And what's the value for whom? Because what you are trained in, like most people, is um, that you have devoted some time and that has a cost and that cost has to be regained. And that's the old industrial economics. You put the potato in the soil and after a while it comes up and have more potatoes, etc. That's the extractive economy. The new economy is the interactive economy which means that if you nourish that value that you are breeding, it's going to be shared and multiplied by other people. And here comes the, the trick actually, when you multiply it, you can do it by books, you can do it by uh, um, podcast, you can do it by social media. And that is called structural capital. So this internet technology helps you to magnify and multiply your gift that you have. And that gift has a value for most people, uh, perhaps the least value for you. So therefore you have to get it out from you into the network. And there you see how it magnifies. So how does one do that? by doing what you're doing right now. You are starting the podcasting, you're starting to share these insights, and then you can, uh, in the extension of that, uh, monetize it by different kinds of techniques. You can start uh, having uh, paid for seminars, you can have uh, subscription models, you can have uh, um, even uh, blockchain models where people can, uh, dig uh, link up to the blockchain of your values. How does one um, decide the amount or the value so you, you get paid? You know, throughout the world, there are different ways of valuing money. That's a very good question. And it's probably very different. So that's, it's not the unit price. It's a relationship price. And the old economics was about the unit price, which was based on cost plus economics. The new one is, is um, what is Carla bringing to the table? How can I um, leverage that for the community in Sweden or some other place? And, and this is called relational capital. And this relational capital is, of course, um, very intangible, but it's based on the, um, to put, take it in a very simple word, positive gossip instead of negative gossip. Okay. So when you say positive gossip, what are you talking about? That the word of mouth that other people are starting to talk about your uh, new channel. Because uh, if you see some, some of the other side is Steve Bannon, who we had heard about, I guess. No, I don't know that name. Uh, uh, Steve Bannon, he has been working as a communication manager for uh, Donald Trump. And he has a very negative message Send, spreading it around the world. So it's negative gossip, actually. And that causes the opposite to what you are trying to do. And therefore, um, think about that when you, uh, during the day and the coming weeks. 
What's the positive gossip that you want to share? That the world needs to come together more. The more that we communicate with each other and get to know each other, the less we are afraid of the differences in the world and the more accepting we are of those differences. Excellent. So you are already there. And actually, I've been doing it, doing the learn, and I want you to come to the Learn English show um, for over two years now. And I literally have thousands of people who are reached by the show. And hundreds yes. of people, we even normally get about a thousand views per show. Today we did it, did not as of yet. But we get, I normally get a thousand views just during the show. But it's all free. And you need to offer yep. something free for people to begin to understand the value. So how do I get this together? And Bertram, Bertola, you are listening. Send, I need to talk to you too. But go. <laughs> I have been trying to get him online with me for month, for almost two years now. He won't do it. But he's welcome to, to participate. And, and the trick is probably that you um, need to develop the new currency. Okay, so what would that be? And it's probably not Bitcoin. It's, um... <laughs> it's too metallic. <laughs> what do you mean by? So you need. What do you mean by metallic? Well, it's a coin. Um, it has to be the relationship capital, um, and um, there is. Uh, Professor, I don't know if we spoke about that last time, but uh, there's a professor in Parma in Italy. His name is Rizzolatti. And Rizzolatti, go on. Rizzolatti discovered that uh, there are mirroring neurons between people. And he did, developed a methodology to, to uh, measure the mirroring neurons. And the mirroring neurons make you smile. When you see a smile, you smile. And that is mirroring oh, yeah, neurons. I know that because I teach about smiling and laughter too at Gigglefest University. Go on. And that is the mirroring neurons. So now when you can discover the mirroring neurons, you can start to put value on them. And you can start to develop uh, various kind of packages for exchanging value. And the value is, is in the in-between space. And that's why it's also called relational capital, because it's in the in-between. But most traditional thinking is within the box. Right. And you need to be in between the boxes. Well, actually, I'm the round peg trying to get into the box. <laughs> So we need to figure out where does that round peg? Um, yes. And it's easier if you have a round box rather than a square right, box. But I don't. The box is square. <laughs> and the box says, Carla, you can't get in here. And I say, oh, yes, I can. You just don't know. You know, you're not thinking in a way that you can be open to what I'm talking about. But I've been asked by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar of the Art of Living Foundation to go around and make people laugh. So that's another thing. Exactly. Point. Be happy. Um, and that's where the mirroring neurons come into the picture. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, he was writing, he was drawing, making drawings about how the body looks like inside the body when there was no x-ray. I didn't know that. 
So he, he was drawing the human body and he, he was detecting that there are certain um, proportions of the body. Uh, and he also saw that the connection between the different parts of the body. And now we know a lot about that. And it's the same with your brain. You see a head, but what's inside the head? And how do you make that inside the head available to others? Have... And if you, if you start with uh, asking the question, what's the weight of your brain? I have no idea. It can't be more than a pound or two. But that this body you know the size is more than that. Yeah, exactly. And but you know the size of your shoes? Yeah. Yeah. Right? How come you know more about your shoes than your head? That now you're doing it again, but I will <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We're trained to look at everything that's outside of us instead of what's inside of us. Yes. And we need yes. to begin looking at what is inside. Like our mindset is determined by how we think. Um, yes. Today, I got through a group, a video that Ray Han did with Michael Engstrom. I don't know if you saw that I posted oh, yeah. it. And basically what he said, money is not the problem, it's how we think. And yes. my gosh, that's true. It's not that yeah. I don't have the money, it's how I'm thinking and I need to change the thought. And unfortunately I said that to Rayhan at the wrong time. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> no, not at the wrong time, you know. And where where did you learn to think? Well, thoughts come in and out of your head from the moment the brain is developed. It goes beyond. Yeah, but where did you? It goes beyond ourselves. And that's why the schooling is so important. And if the schooling is um, not learning you to think, then you are handicapped for the rest of your life. True. And that's why, why Leonardo was so successful in his uh, life journey, because he was prototyping, testing, and, and visualizing what he saw. And if we can visualize our thinking, it becomes extremely interesting. And with modern uh, software, we can start to visualize the brain power of your thoughts. And we can even start to develop to have mind gyms. Just imagine if you have three minutes of mind gym every morning on your channel with different persons. What a great idea. Do it early morning. Could I get you to come? Yes. Probably. Three minutes with Carla. And should I charge for that or should we charge for um, for the person who comes? Probably neither nor. You should turn it into some kind of uh, donation. That makes sense. And we could call Carla's Mind Gym. And we could yes. start with something very positive. A mind gym. Yeah, for example, uh, why do you know more about your feet than your brain? Hey, could you do it with me this week? Yes, I can start and see if it works. We can do a prototype. Let's do it tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning I have an appointment. Well, we have nine hours difference, no, don't we? Hours difference. It's only six hours. So well, then, we can... Um, yes, we can do it. We can do it. Let's test it. And just 
no more than five minutes, but my kid. No, no, yeah. I'll, Three minutes. And I'll do it on my profile page. And we'll see what happens. Yes. Well, you know, I don't think you know, I'll tell you now, I've been doing the mindset change journey. And it's about five, five to ten minutes every day where I get on on Facebook Live and I talk about what I learned in mindset today. And this goes along with the whole thing. And I could also put it on my YouTube channel. Yep. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's a deal. So I see you tomorrow morning. Well, what time? I mean, tomorrow morning, my time. Could we do it like about 5.30 or 5 o'clock your time in the, in the evening? Would you, would that oh, yeah, work we can. For you? Yes, definitely. And we'll introduce this whole idea. I love it. Yep. And... And meanwhile, think about um, what might be a good starting question. What is mindset? Most people don't even understand that. I discussed that a little. Oh, Bertolo likes the idea. Bertolo, you can come too. <laughs> He, he can you join us. You want to join us tomorrow morning? I'll do it on... Um, on Zoom, and I can have the three of us there. Yes. That would be wonderful. And it would be 12 p.m. my time and 6 your time, 6 p.m. your time. Very good. Let's and go we'll for it. we'll see how it goes. But I think this is something I think the whole world is looking for right now. Yes, and yes, the mindset. The world needs it. That's the problem that's going on. Bertolo, come! Oh, my God! He's coming. Very good. Right. <laughs> okay, I will make a group with the three of us, of us, and we will, I'll send the Zoom link, and we'll do it on Zoom. Oh, will this be yep. cool? So you see, that was the result of today. And that's the beginning of the change. Yes. Yes. And I even got Bertola to agree to something. I mean, that's, yeah. in my mind, that's totally above anything I expected. And we could talk about social capital. We could talk about so many things. And we can ask Bartula some questions. We can ask if he has the same weight of the brain as you. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that, he, that any of us have the same brain weight. Because if we did, then we wouldn't be individuals. We are unique as individuals, but we are very alike. 99.9% .9 alike. How cool. I am really excited now. <laughs> uh, maybe so we now get we've... Michael Cillian on this. Yes. Captain Future. Captain Future, Mr. Future, Mr. Social Capital, and Miss Laugh, Smile and Laugh, Laughter in English. And I can actually put, oh, Bertola, would you stay for the week? We'd have so much fun. This would be great. Now we have to uh, prepare for tomorrow. So I, I finish here. Carla, thank you very much for the inspiration. I am so excited. You inspired me. We That's inspired mutual. Each other. Yes. Yes. And that is mirroring neurons. And this is so very, very cool. I am, you can't imagine how excited I am about this. 
I will create the group right after we get off. Let's um, remind people that we're here from the Institute of Peace, which is an organization creating peace throughout the world with a conversation at a time. And at 12 noon U.S. time, 6 p.m. Swedish time, and I think it's the same for um, Greece. And it'll be 9 o'clock right before the Learn English program in Pakistan and nine and a half hours before the program in in the Learn English program in India. Boy, I did a lot of conversion of time right there. We will see you <laughs> Very then, good. and we're going to go out with a big, with some laughter. Yay, he's going to come. Yes, I'm so happy excited. future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bertola. You see you tomorrow, there, then. Buddy. No excuses. Yes, welcome okay. tomorrow. Bye, everyone. <laughs> bye, bye.